Please be advised, the following presentation is not intended for minors. My bedside clock reads 6.10. Definitely not an alarm, at least not one that I set. Someone calling me? I fumble for my phone and peer at the screen as I rub the sleep from my eyes. It's... Don't worry, that's the game. That's the game. I forgot. Got, I forgot it did that. I don't know why, but the, like, phone sound effect that I use is, like, the Discord notification sound. So that's going to pop up every now and then. So don't worry. It's not you. It's the game. Is it bad? Every time I hear Madam Scorpion's voice, I think of Roz from Monsters, Inc. The voices aren't remotely similar at all. <laughs> I don't know what kind of things you're into, Demo, but I don't want to be a part of it. It's a weird Discord not sound. Wait, was that the Discord sound or... Hold on. Did they change it? I don't, I don't know, because like, I, I remember hearing that sound before. But yeah, originally when the game first... Uh, uh, yeah, when the game first came out, uh, the, the sound for the phones was straight up just like Discord notification sound, so maybe they changed that. But my brain recognizes the sound, but didn't actually put two and two together. <laughs> Please expect less of me, boss. <laughs> See, the call ends abruptly, and I place my phone back on my nightstand. Not surprising, Scorpion doesn't strike me as a no-you-hang-up uh, no sort of person. I take a moment to rub my eyes and stretch before rolling out of bed. I'm so tired that the first few steps are wobbly, so I slap myself a little to jumpstart my system. Come on, man. Get it into gear. I snatch my uniform from the floor and uh, give it a tentative sniff. A little ripe, but not too bad. Apparently I need a hurry, so it'll have to do. No time for my usual morning routine either, so in lieu of my toothbrush I rummage through my nightstand for an old tin of mints. Expired eight months ago. Probably still fine. <laughs> yeah, bro, we in our DMs, yeah. Uh, chewing on my vaguely mint-flavored chalk and still sipping up my uniform, I hurry out the door. I walk through the halls at a brisk pace, completely unimpeded by traffic. The place is practically empty at this time of day, though I'd have at least uh, expected to find one or two diehards patrolling the halls with gusto. The research wing is, uh, is the same. I don't encounter a single guard on my way here. Surely someone was meant to have this shift. Is this a result of whatever Scorpion sent me to investigate, or did she just order the halls cleared herself? Either way, I need to be careful. Finally, I reach my hall. My familiar lonely hall, home to my equally lonely door, number 1385, right where I left it. But not as I left it, because miraculously the door is somehow open. I wasn't sure what I was expecting based on the vague information Scorpion gave me, but an open door with no one around wasn't it. Silently, I pull out my baton and inch forward. Whatever's in there, I'm determined not to let it kill me. I spent too many hours guarding this door to die the moment I finally walk through it. The closer I get to the door, the more carefully I step. By the time I've reached, this, uh, reached its precipice, I'm practically tiptoeing. I pause, listening for some clue as to what might await me inside, but all I can make out is the whirring of machinery in the lair's overtaxed air conditioning system. I debate calling Dave, but think better of it. He'll either charge right in like he did with Shining Nova, or abandon me to supervise something else like he did with Miss Dynamo. I need to handle this myself. I take a deep breath and step inside. Well, holy shit. This is a lot bigger than I expected. And what the hell is that? A monolith of a machine can't possibly be a computer, can it? I don't see what else it could be. There are no visible pipes or mechanisms, just wires, and it looks like it houses circuitry. Also, that's a very unfortunate shape for it, too. <laughs> Getting some serious I can't let you do that vibes from this thing. This has been here the whole time? Oh, I come in peace. Hopefully not evil AI person. Please don't sick any robots on me. I've had quite enough of that recently. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, it is too late, Stan. Now I must turn you into a cyborg and enslave your mind. Don't worry. Hey, okay, Kate, what's up? What are you doing in here? Any serious threat of an uprising, and there's a good chance the robots get too distracted by social media to actually overthrow the government. See, you say that, but <laughs> two years after this game comes out, an AI is getting scarily good already. Kate, are you responding to the alarm too? <laughs> Kate's the I best. Didn't think you yeah. Had a shift this early. 
I stow my baton and walk over to greet her. Glad you do, though. If I don't find whoever tripped it, my ass is on the line. Any signs of what they were up to? Doesn't look like this place has been disturbed too much. Well, uh, the answer to both of those questions is yes and no. There's no sign of anyone else. And as for the alarm, I guess you could say that I'm uh, investigating it. Wait, wait, time out. Are you saying that you broke in here? It's a little more complicated than that, but... Just, just a little yeah. bit. What? What does that mean, exactly? Seems like a yes or no question. On instinct, I take a step back and my hand inches towards my equipment belt. Whoa, hey, just wait a second, okay? A at least let me explain. I know we've only known each other for a short time, and we're not much closer than acquaintances. It would be perfectly reasonable for you not to trust me right now. But you have something, Stan. Man and Scorpion would call it potential, but I think that it's something different. The capacity to change. And not just upward, towards a stable bank account and an apartment with a window, but outwards, towards understanding other people. All of which is to say, there are some things you deserve to know. About me, about this place, about Scorpion. Everything. I just need a chance to explain. All right, explain away. Starting with exactly why you needed to get into this room. Is this why you were so curious about the door on our tour? Did you know this was in here? Sort of. I knew something like this was in here, but not this exactly. I didn't think they had enough time to set a unit like this up, but Scorpion and Bedlam must have been working together for longer than anyone thought. So this machine is Scorpion's? I guess that makes sense. Lord Bedlam isn't exactly at the cutting edge when it comes to technology. But what did she put it here for? And that's where things get complicated. Think, what do you know about Madame Scorpion, outside of the whole assassin thing? What are her skills, her interests? She was Bedlam's partner on that job Wednesday, right? She showed up personally for it, even intervened. And what was she after? Yeah, because like we went from like stealing pet food to like data theft out of nowhere. Data, not really sure what kind, but it was a private tech company. No weapons, no financials. I never really figured out anything more specific than that. And her business, the Scorpion Group. They've got this new Henchcan app, right? Others too. And how do apps identify, recruit, and monetize users? Data. The private kind that companies aren't technically supposed to keep, but always do. Because of course. Okay, I follow you. But is that really all this is about? An app for hiring meat shields? No, it's more than that. Think about it, you were part of her second data heist in a week, and those are just the ones you know about. That would be overkill for a few apps. And it's more than a business asset to her. Come on, you saw her in action last night, didn't you? Think about how she acted. Did she say or do anything that felt off? Yeah, actually. Remember that thing with those guards in the first room? She knew every detail about it without even being there. And when I brought it up, she started this whole cat and mouse thing. Somehow, I think she was tapping into the security system there. Then later, before I got turned into a decoy, she was able to hack open the door just by touching it. And I didn't notice her carrying anything to actually take that data with her, now that I think about it. That sounds consistent. So, based on that, clearly she can communicate with complex and organic systems. What do you think that means? Oh my god, Madam Scorpion's a robot! I thought you said we had three decades! <laughs> god damn it, Stan, shut up. What? No, she's human. She just has powers that let her brain work like a robot's. Sort of. It doesn't officially have a name, because she's the only known case, and she's not exactly forthcoming on the details. I like to call it cerebral super processing. On a basic level, she appears that to absorb makes no and process sense. data subconsciously way beyond the rate of a normal human. However, it's expanded to a variety of physical and mental abilities. Right. Hey, it's so superhero that's how she stuff. Was able it to hack doesn't need to make sense. She must have some kind of superhuman Wi Fi, too. Uh, sure, if that helps you understand it better. That Wi Fi and her enhanced physique. Yeah, it's 7G. She's working on the 7G network. Or a completely organic evolution of her baseline abilities. It's like I've been telling you, she's uniquely dangerous. And since you've been caught in her gravity, well, I figured you ought to know. Gravity's a word for it. Stalking, too. 
She hacked herself onto my contact list and called me this morning. That's why I'm here. Not that I'm complaining about nabbing a smoking uh, supervillain's number without having to lift a finger. Though I suppose she'll give me something else to complain about if I don't get this handled. I guess I caught her attention somehow, though I'm not sure if it's the good or the bad kind of attention. It's never the good kind, Stan. What, are you jealous? Didn't take you for the type. Believe me, I'm not, and that goes for either of you. All right, well, thanks for the info anyway. If I'm going to be dealing with her a lot, it'll be good to keep in mind. No problem. Like I said, you deserve to know at least that much. You might work for a supervillain, but the difference between someone like Lord Bedlam and Madame Scorpion is vast. You're way out of your league. Kate, I'm always out of my league. That's part of the job. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the job description. But why the steroidal server over there? Isn't all that information in her head? I'm not sure. Maybe it's meant to augment her power or cycle new sets of data in and out. Whatever it's for, she must think it's important. She's invested a ton in it. Her and Bedlam both, it looks like. Or at least he paid for the paint job. If that. As far as I can tell, your boss has basically turned into a supervillain shell company for the Scorpion Group. So he might have picked the paint, but paid for it? Doubt it. Good point. I don't think that dog food heist paid enough for a liter of soda, much less 20 gallons of paint. In that case, we'd better start hunting for whoever it was that broke in here. I have a feeling Scorpion's not going to be happy if she finds out someone's been checking her secret supercomputer's browsing history, and we don't have any leads to offer her. Come on. <laughs> but what about the balloony? Good question. I start to head deeper into the room, searching for something that can tell us uh, what happened here. Stan, wait. Wait for what? Now you know I hate to pull rank, but listen to the vet on this one, okay? There are times to wait and talk things through, but this is not one of them. I keep moving and Kate still doesn't follow. I mean it. Stop. There's something else. And I mean it, Kate. If we don't at least make the effort to follow this up, it's going to be bad news. Trust me. Now let's go. Once more, uh, yeah, once more, I turn to leave. What if it was actually her browsing history? Thing, Stan. I'm the one you're looking for. Oh my god! Smoke rises from the scorch mark in front of my feet, stopping me dead in my tracks, mouth agape. I turn towards Kate to find her training a weapon at me. Uh, Kate? That's not my name. I blink, dumbfounded, and glance at the weapon. Blue and white. Those are the same colors as... Nova. Surprise! She's Paladin Iron Man that we fought at the beginning of the game. There you go. Knew you'd recognize me eventually. Just had to jog your memory a little. No way. It's just no way. This whole time I thought I'd be uh, trading tips and banter with some rookie. Not a world famous superhero. He <laughs> guessed the wrong hero. Yeah, you were close. That's why I shut my mouth. <laughs> How did I miss it? Were the signs? Maybe. Sorry. Elephant tranquilizers tend to make things a little hazy. Got the hearts for Iron Woman. <laughs> Fuck. But you, your memory didn't need any jogging, did it? No, you recognized me from the moment you got here. That's why you went right up to me during orientation. That's why you've been following me around. It's also why you busted out all those crazy ninja moves during last night's job. Surprise. And that's why... Are you telling me you left your name tag on so you could remember your fake name? Seriously? That's why she freaked out when we joked about her name not actually being Kate. <laughs> the signs were there. Hey, it's tough to keep everything straight when you're going undercover. There's nothing wrong with a cheat sheet. It's one syllable. You work at the absolute cutting edge of robotics, and you can't remember Kate? <laughs> She's a stalker, got it? It's just, I have a lot of names to keep straight, okay? Anyway, I was going to answer three questions as an apology for being dishonest with you, but I'm counting that as the first one. So now you only get two. I don't think that's going to cover everything. You'll make do. Oh, come on. Fire away. <laughs> so Shining Nova's a cute girl. <laughs> no wonder the crotch shot didn't work. <laughs> oh, okay. So, what do we go for? So, beneath all that high-tech weaponry and metal plating, Shining Nova's a cute girl. I feel like I just got the scoop of the century. Cute, huh? 
Why use that adjective, not something like hot or fine as hell? I'm not a freaking bunny rabbit. I'm a grown-ass woman. All right, she doesn't like being called cute. There's a spectrum for this sort of thing, you know? It's not a binary choice between Amazonian goddess and petite little flower. Okay, I'm missing some context. That's what I'm trying to say! It's all context! I'm not even that short. All these super-powered people are just really tall, right? Of course I look shorter standing next to Dynamo. Have you seen her? She's a tank. She could curl my apartment building. Clearly we struck a nerve calling her cute. And I can only make my shoulder pads so big before they affect my outfit. <laughs> She's I molding. I don't care if the looks uneven. It's a bunch of bullshit. All right then. So I guess cute has a lot of negative connotations we want to avoid. A little more cute than hot, I don't know. <laughs> about that just been dealing with some shit with the association you know how it is not remotely no right guess not but you really are pretty in a very mature non-bunny rabbit sort of way what grade did you get in that poetry class c plus baby yeah that's solid right. c plus student right there i appreciate the sentiment though dork all right i'm counting that as one question you get one more make it count Uh, oh, okay. The questions actually change. Except the top one. <laughs> okay. So we got, you really think you'll escape? Sure, you don't want to join us or why me? I'm seeing a why me. <laughs> C's get degrees, baby. They sure do. It looks like why it is. Why me? Because we had a short conversation and then you tranquilized me? Boo, Damo. Boo. No, well, yes, kind of. It's complicated. This isn't coming out right. What I'm saying is... Yep. Suddenly alarms blare, echoing through the lair's stone halls. The lights begin to flash, cutting off Kate, or rather, Shining Nova, before she can finish her thought. Shit, thought I had more time. Guess this is where we part ways. Unless... Come with me. I got what I came for, but that's just the first step. I could use your help with the rest. How am I supposed to trust that after you just revealed that you've been deceiving me this whole time? This isn't an angle, Stan. I'm honestly making an offer. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. All the bad luck and desperate decisions that got you here, you can undo them. A total reset. All you have to do is go out on a limb and trust me. Or I could torpedo my career and live out my days in a trailer park somewhere, wondering when I'm going to wake up covered in scorpion stings. You're asking me to risk what little I've built here on what? What guarantee? I can't offer you one. But sometimes the only chance you have to break away from a system like this is to take that kind of risk. Sometimes you have to bet on yourself. So what do you say? Ready to make that wager? All right. Major decision. Do we go with Kate or do we, you know, stick with our guns and try to take her in? <laughs> what do we do? Go with a cute girl that doesn't like being called cute? Or, you know, stick with uh, Madam Scorpion and how scary she is, but possibly, you know, be helping out like a really sick supervillain. Be the simp? But to who? <laughs> simp to Kate or Madam Scorpion? That's the question. Maybe we can get to third base before it stings us. <laughs> <laughs> Want to live past third base? Hey, but it would be the most amazing third base ever. Alright, everyone wants to go with Kate. Let's go with Kate. Okay. Okay. We're officially a good guy now. I'll go with you. No idea where it'll take me, but screw it. Chips on the table. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm taken aback by how quickly Nova lets her guard down. Without hesitation, she's lowered her weapon and starts casually walking up to me. Uh, with so much spring in her step that she's practically skipping. Yeah, always bet on Stanley. Still beaming, she playfully punches me in the shoulder. Though she's so excited that it actually hurts a little. And that's the exciting part of forging your own path. The possibility of it all. The world's laid out in front of you, Stan. Not if we don't get out of here. God, she really is cute. She is. She's adorable. Oh, right, of course. Escape first, celebration later. <laughs> she hops and skips like a bunny. Uh, I can see why she's really annoyed at that. She motions to the door with her head. Let's get moving. 
Main entrance is a ways off, but I think I figured out a way to get there that should avoid attention. Main entrance? No way. Scorpion will be there for sure. Cafeteria is our best bet. The cafeteria? Really? Trust me. I'll explain when we get there. Now come on. Okay. You take point then, Mr. X Engineman. You won't regret this. I promise. We'll see. I still have my doubts, but at this point, it doesn't matter. If I'm doing this, I've got to be all in on it. Or the odds are good that it ends with me getting carved up by an energy sword. Let's see, so with Kate right behind me, I start jogging for the exit. She could probably go a bit faster on her own, but I know if I push myself too hard, I'll just be a liability if we run into trouble. No, not Kate. Shining Nova. Christ, it's gonna be hard to get over. Superheroes just aren't like the rest of us. They're hardly even people. More like monuments. Big sta uh, yeah, big statues with shiny plaques. Telling you that if you uphold your good old-fashioned values, work hard and get a little lucky, you can be larger than life. So to have spent this much time with one without even realizing it, well, it's jarring to say the least. <laughs> Calling her Kate until we get a proper name. Hell, I went on a heist with one. We need to get out of here. We need to do it fast. Even with the alarms blaring, the holes are mostly empty. Only a skeleton crew is up this early. The research wing was always light on staff anyway. I glance at Nova, who is expected uh, is having no trouble keeping up. If we maintain this pace, we should be alright. The cafeteria is a lot closer than the main entrance, and I haven't heard an announcement that specifies us as the intruders. In our uniforms, it's unlikely that anyone but Scorpion herself is going to stop us. Oh, hey there, buddy. There you are. God damn it, Dave. <laughs> Not now. I heard there was an alarm at your door, so I went to your room to assign you the task of investigating it, but you weren't there. So then I thought to myself, you know, Dave, <laughs> Roll credits. a true squad supervisor is always thorough when it comes to his team. And that's when I decided to check on your door myself to make sure everything was A-OK. -okay. How is good old door 1385? Oh, you know, it opens and closes, like doors do. <laughs> doors do open and close, don't they? Wait, it opened? That door's not supposed to open. Oh no, not at all. It was just a turn of phrase. How do you turn a phrase? <laughs> you oh, damn it, Dave. That the door wasn't really open, just that it's capable of opening. Probably. Oh, hey there, Kate. How are you this fine morning? Enjoy game night? Oh, I actually had to catch up on some work, so I didn't get to enjoy it. How was it? It's Dave from tech support. No, he's a supervisor. He's not tech. Just the last terrific. thing he knows. Lord Bedlam was busy, so I got to be the race car and oligarchy. Gosh, I didn't expect to find you Monopoly. here. Monopoly. Your squad was in the East Wing this morning. I uh, got turned around. You know how these halls can be. Yeah, you know, right, buddy? Now we're really in a hurry, so... The door was open, you turned a phrase, and now an unauthorized contractor was at a door with level 4 security clearance? Stan, I expect better than this from a senior member of our squad. You're right, and I'm just so sorry, but we really have to... You know what my great uncle Dale Dave said about butts? Everyone has them, and by God golly, damn it, they Dave, really shut up. So no we gotta go. Stan, you're staying right here until we sort all this out. Dave, listen, this is my fault, so... No, I'm the senior henchman here. You're right, Dave. It's my responsibility. What are you doing? <laughs> Dave, no one cares. I can be held up. You can't. Keep going. I'll deal with this. Sorry, can you speak up? All the excitement from game night really messed with my hair. <laughs> can we sock him, please? I look down at Nova. I can't see her eyes through the mask, but her jaw is set and her brow is furrowed in concern. I offer a weak smile and she sighs. Don't you dare stand me up, asshole. She lightly brushes her hand against my shoulder and then turns to go. Well, uh, this seems like a squad thing. And speaking of squads, I totally need to find my own, so... Don't mean punching him, I mean literally shoving our sock in his mouth. Hmm, well, I... Thanks, Dave. See you at lunch. Before Dave's brain can finish forming whatever thought he'd been working on, Nova is jogging down the hall, uh, safely on her way to the cafeteria. Now, I just have to find a way to weasel my way out. Um, uh, weasel my own way out. Ah, jeez, I totally forgot. Madam Scorpion wanted to see me after I checked Dave's on brain the door. Forming Super thoughts, top I don't think so. Stuff, yeah. But I'll tell you everything you need to know about the door after that, okay? Sorry, but I need to check our protocol on this. 
Dave reaches into one of his pouches and pulls out a small paperback book with Lord Bedlam's visage uh, printed on the front. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it says I need to hold you here until you can be properly questioned. Gosh, I'm sorry, buddy, but it looks like you're going to be late. Late? Dude, did I not tell you who I was meeting? Don't worry, I'm sure she'll understand. It's protocol. Everyone loves protocol. It's Lord Bedlam's protocol. Do you think Madame Scorpion is going to give two shits what that little book has to say? Well, she should. But she won't. Gosh, buddy, I don't know. You might be right about her. But if we just start ignoring protocol, what happens next? It's like a slippery Dave, domino. Dave, please. Once just let starts, me go. It just keeps on slipping. I rub my eyes and sigh, trying my best to keep it together. Even if I had an hour, I'm not sure I could convince him to drop this. At least not through any conventional kind of uh, reasoning. I just say when I'll stab Dave with my pitchfork. Might have to force my way past him, and that's a gamble. Dave doesn't have much, let's call it tactical instinct. But physically, he could really give me a hard time. Better to avoid it if I can. Maybe I just need to try a different diplomatic approach. Something more personal. You know, with all this talk about door 1385... About time we just I'm make Dave disappear. <laughs> yeah, by Remember the paperwork. conversation we had there this week? It was a simpler time. It sure was, wasn't it? That was when you invited me to game night, right? Well, of course I did. I couldn't leave my buddy out, now could I? But you left us all out, remember? You were out on your mission with Madame Scorpion. <laughs> Bedlam's orders lie. <laughs> Alright, how do we weasel our way out of this? Do we lie to him, say it's Bedlam's orders, uh, say it's because I'm being underpaid or for the best? Yeah, everyone is saying lie. <laughs> lie or underpaid? Well, lie is the one that's winning at the moment, so let's lie. Lord Bedlam wanted me to. Madam Scorpion's our guest, remember? And she's a supervillain too. So as a henchman, he said it was our duty to follow her orders like his own. Hmm, well, that does make sense. Kind of like how it's your duty to follow your squad supervisor's orders, right? I mean, not exactly, since you can't cut me in half with a laser sword, but sure, why not? Anyway, it's been nice reminiscing, but why don't we catch up more at lunch, okay? See you then. I start to walk forward, but Dave holds up a hand to stop me. Damn it, I thought that might distract him enough to let me slip by, but his memory is better than I thought. Whoa, just where do you think you're going, mister? We talked about this. You have to wait here. It's protocol. And protocol is protocol. <laughs> Alright. Do we confess our way through, or do we straight up just clock Dave? <laughs> That's what I thought. There will be blood. <laughs> Shit. You know what? Fine. Hard way it is then. But one way or another, I'm leaving. I reach down to my belt and grasp my baton, not even trying to be subtle about it for some uh, for some reason. I feel less tense than when I try to take the uh, peaceful approach. Like I've taken off a jacket that's a size too small. I don't like your tone, Stan. Or the fact that you're about to unholster your weapon without my authorization. Hey, <laughs> kill Dave. There will be no witnesses. It almost seems like you're threatening your supervisor. Let me save you a few minutes of thinking. There's no almost about it. <laughs> Check out this protocol. I've been patient with you, Dave. Real patient. Like a monk in purple spandex while you strut around with that big grin on your face, reminding me how you're in charge. Like your job title makes you so special. This voice actually changed. I almost feel threatened. But it doesn't. When some cape demigod crashes our little heists, you and I are identical to them. Whatever rank Bedlam may plaster on your ID, you're not above me. Not really. So when I say that I'm leaving, I don't think you can actually stop me. I pull out my baton, snap it open with a flick, and press a button on its hilt. Sparks dance around its shocking coils in response. But you're free to try. Dave's eyes narrow and his grip tightens on the hilt of his own baton. How dare you! You will refer to him as Lord Bedlam, Henchman 065. 
Just like during Wednesday's operation, Dave acts without hesitation or thought. His baton has barely escaped its holster, and the words have just left his lips. Yet he's already charged, uh, charging forward. But I knew that would happen, so when he swipes at me with his baton, I'm ready to block. Even with two hands, I stumbled back. Damn, I forgot how strong he was. I mean, he's no dynamo, but for a normal guy, uh, Dave's got some real muscle. But he's mad. And even thinking clearly, he's not exactly a muscle tactician. If I can bait him in and wait for something uh, particularly sloppy, maybe I can catch him with a counterattack. Just surrender to the will of Lord Bedlam 065 and I'll only have your pay docked for a month. Don't make it worse for yourself. Worse how? Would I have to spend even more time listening to stories about great grandpappy Dean Dave Duke or the rest of your dumbass family? It's great grandpappy Dean Dave Dwaynesenberg and he <laughs> was a saint! God damn it. Uh, now totally blinded with righteous fury for both Lord Bedlam and his endlessly bizarre family tree, Dave presses the attack, swinging wildly. I backpedal, parrying and blocking as best I can, but one particularly vicious swing slips past and clips my side. <laughs> we brought Grandpappy into this, yeah. It's a glancing shot, but it leaves Dave emboldened. Now with a triumphant cry, he launches forward in a wild charge. Our Lord Bedlam! Now's my chance. I don't have the opportunity to win a whole lot of fights, but with everything that's happened recently, I think I've picked up a move or two that might do the trick. Faint left but attack right, copy Kate's armbar, or lift with your legs. What do we do? I, I'm... I feel like everyone's gonna go with copy Kate's armbar. <laughs> Kick him in the balls. Unfortunately, we don't have that option. <laughs> Alright, we're going with lift. Yeah, I know just the thing. He probably won't grasp the irony in this, even if it was his own idea, but that's okay. I will. As Dave launches forward, I drop down to a low crouch and step towards him. I feel his baton whiz past me overhead, a sound of dismay as he tries to slam on the brakes. It's too late. By then I'm already in position beneath his torso, legs coiled. With all my strength, I push upward, driving my shoulder into his chest and gripping his belt as I pivot around. Dave's momentum combined with the lift from my legs takes him off his feet, sent tumbling over my shoulder until his back slams into the ground, knocking the wind out of him. It's hardly a perfect judo toss, but the principle is still the same. <coughs> As Dave gasps for breath, I jab my baton down sharply into his kidney. Give him a little shock to put him down for the count. <laughs> I take a moment to get my pulse under control, but I can't help but smirk a little. Don't forget to put that ass kicking on your report, buddy. I almost feel bad, but he really didn't leave me many options. I need to catch up with Nova or we could both be dead. Scorpion could find either of us any minute. And I don't think that little stunt is going to work on someone like her. But no time to dwell on it. I need to get moving, so after taking a deep calming breath, I start off down the hallway at a jog, leaving Dave behind. Yeah, <laughs> you almost feel bad, I don't, yeah. I find myself moving on autopilot, winding my way through the fortress halls without stopping to consider my location. It's a big advantage I have over Nova, even if her pace is probably faster. So while it's tempting to push myself in an effort to keep up a steady jog, it's probably my best bet. <laughs> also, I just noticed they accidentally put in best twice. Uh, I just have to hope that it's enough. After a time, I start seeing signs of her escape. Some scorch marks, a few of my unconscious comrades, and eventually some distant sounds to match. Almost there. Try to calm my pounding heartbeat. This is really happening, isn't it? Even with my cafeteria shortcut, we're going to have to fight our way out of here. Am I ready for that? It doesn't matter. I guess it's happening anyway. I don't know what uh, what help I'll be to someone like her, but I've got to try. Signs of Nova's passing grow more dense, uh, but something else joins the KO'd henchmen and blast marks. Long molten scars on the floor and wall still glowing from the heat of what made them. I know what that means, but I'm still not ready for the sight of, uh, of that await- <laughs> Do it again! I know what that means, but I'm still not ready for the sight that awaits me as I round the next corner as I skid to a stop. Madam Scorpion looms over Shining Nova, sword leveled and eyes gleaming in its flickering red light. 
nervous mask flutters in the air between them, slanched cleanly in half, leaving her defiant glare unobscured. Ah, uh, there it is. That's the look I was hoping for. Such a selfish girl, hiding that behind flimsy masks and gaudy helmets. I could feel it last night, you know, even as you so futilely tried to subdue it. But resolve like that, it has a heat to it that can't be contained. I can't wait to watch it flicker and die. Well, I can't wait to blast that smug little smirk clean off your face. So I guess that makes us even. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Whether or not you're adorned in your full armored ensemble, we're hardly even. While Scorpion's eyes don't appear to leave Nova, I see a flicker of recognition. Her smirk grows ever so slightly. Ah, Stanley. There you are. Well done. I dare say this little rebellion is nearly crushed. Henry would be proud, I'm sure. In fact, I think I'll leave the final stroke to you. So this if this is our chance to hit Madame Scorpion with our long rod, Kate's gonna like watching it. <laughs> Innuendo! Be a dear and restrain this imposter. It would be fitting, I think, for you of all people to be the one to capture Shining Nova. He's not going to do that. He isn't. That's right. He's not just some puppet for you to command. Stands his own person with his own choices. And he's chosen to reject you. He's coming with me. From now on, he doesn't have to be henchman number 065. He can just be Stan. And whoever that might be is up to him. Well, yes. So it is. Don't you see what she's doing? All Kate has done is lie to you. And this time is no different. Lies and manipulation. Shit, yeah, shit indeed. Stanley, listen to me. I called you for a reason. You've shown the potential for something more, but you have to see. <laughs> you this. ruined the surprise. Do not concern yourself with the fate of this charlatan or anyone else. Our ambition is what matters. That's the game of power. And make no mistake, it is zero sum. Yeah. Uh, it's like, Kate, baby, come on, at least uh, let us get a whack in with the element of surprise. Regardless yeah. of what these self-proclaimed heroes may tell you, for us to win, others must lose. Starting with her. Show me you understand that, and we can realize our ambitions together. Go on, Stanley. Do it. Stan, don't. I, uh, I... This is it. Whatever I do next, I have a feeling there'll be no going back. All right. Big choice. Do we keep helping Kate, aka Shining Nova, or do we abandon her at the last second to help Madame Scorpion, or just stand here and do nothing? Yeah, it, it would be kind of a dick move. It would be kind of a dick move if we don't. I won't! I don't wait for a response uh, before either bleh, before either woman has the chance to react. I charge forward, weapon in hand, right at Madame Scorpion. I can see the shock on her face as she finally turns towards me. Hard to blame her. Kind of surprised myself right now, if I'm being honest. It's like instinct and emotion don't uh, took the wheel uh, as soon as I made my decision. Guess you could call this a case of fight or flight, and for once I decided to fight. To really sincerely fight. We have to choose between two beautiful women who are oddly into us. Is this a harem visual novel? Surprise! Kinda! <laughs> you thought this was about superheroes? No, it's a visual novel. Of course it's about waifus. It was never in doubt which of uh, those Scorpion would choose. As I draw closer, her shock turns into anger and her sword moves to block my baton. The shift is so fast that it leaves me feeling like I'm stuck in the mud. It's a dating sim. Damn it, the Japanese got me again. <laughs> oh, God. But while my reflexes are too slow for the supervillain, there's uh, someone else here who's a lot faster. Get down! Again, I'm too slow. I barely managed to put on the brakes before Scorpion drops into a crouch, uh, hoping to avoid whatever Nova was planning. 
For a moment, it looks like Nova's concern for my safety has backfired. That is, until Madame Scorpion sees the metal sphere that she's, uh, she has practically fallen on top of. It beeps ominously as it rolls to a stop. Oh, shit. I try to cover my eyes and turn away from the blast that follows, but it still leaves my ears ringing and my vision spotty. Through the haze, I feel someone grip my arm. Come on, move! I don't argue and my legs comply with Nova's request. By the time my vision is clear, we're racing down another hallway and Madame Scorpion is out of sight. For now, anyway. Nova's still leading the way and starts to make a right turn, yet even with the added confusion of the explosive, I recognize the hallway and I resist tugging in the other direction. No, left. Cafeteria's this way. <laughs> yeah, flashbang! Uh, there's a hint of hesitation in Nova's eyes, but it quickly disappears. The quick nod, she follows me to the left. You're sure about this cafeteria thing? Her eyes are so cool. She has nice eyes. Positive. Faster and there's a chance Scorpion doesn't guess we're headed there. Best bet. Honestly, I find it a lot crazier that you just rabbit seasoned a super-powered assassin. <laughs> it works more often than you think. Ask me about Dr. Calamity later. I, I, like, I, later. I love, like, the little world-building of, like, whoever Dr. Calamity is, he always gets screwed over. I think that's, like, the fifth time he's been mentioned that, like, he's been screwed over by, uh, superheroes. Oh, I accidentally skipped that. I say, uh, my heart and legs are competing over which of them can protest more painfully. I can't afford to listen to them. We're nearly there. Halt, you traitors! Halt in the name of Lord Bedlam! There it is. <laughs> I was wondering if we'd see him this stream. Yes, tremble, you treasonous swine. Tremble before the sight of your doom. For I, Lord Bedlam, do not suffer fools. Treachery or long delivery times on Lair Dash. Oh, God. Now behold the glory of Lord. Oh, my glory. <laughs> As I sidestep Lord Bedlam's twitching form, I can't help but wince. Did you have to blast him in the crotch? Wasn't sure it would get through the helmet. You seem kind of underhanded for a superhero. Breathing, Stan. Right. I love Lord Bedlam so much. Uh, we burst through the cafeteria doors and Nova hesitates again. I continue onward, weaving her, uh, waving her towards the far side of the room. Kitchen! She nods and resumes her pace, vaulting the counter while I run around it. Only when we're through the kitchen doors I, do I slow down. Luckily, it seems like the alarms have emptied out the whole cafeteria. We're alone. Okay, there should, should be an exit to a loading dock. Phew. Oh god, can you lung collapse from breathing too hard? Holy shit. Uh, what's the chance that Bedlam is a freckled tape glasses wearing nerd? Oh, 100%. Loading dock? <laughs> we can steal right. some baloney uh, just for the principle of it. Thinking. That's the last thing Stan would want to do, actually. Remember, he's been eating nothing but for a month. Gingerly, we weave our way past appliances and countertops until we're at the back of the kitchen. There are, in fact, several doors. One to the bathroom, one to a meat locker, and a third uh, that looks promising. That's it? I nod and she opens the door, revealing what looks like an empty concrete box. Now, uh, but one with thin beams. Uh, thin beams of sunlight poking in through the crack in a large, uh, in the large metal doors on the opposite wall. And I can't read. Gate will be locked, but there's a one-way hatch next to it. No keypad or anything, so no one will even know we used it. So that's where the emergency exit is. I think there had to be at least one way out without an electronic lock. That's just secret bunker architecture 101. Hey, how come this wasn't part of the tour? That seems like a serious safety oversight. You just took my boss out with a laser to the nuts, and this is where you question our competence. All right, I'll save it for the debrief. <laughs> come on, let's get that thing open before someone wanders in here. Shining Nova and I enter the loading dock, letting the door close behind us. In the interest of covering our tracks, we leave the lights off, letting the blue glow of Nova's weapon illuminate our path forward. Once we reach the door, I wince at the sound it makes as I unlatch it, fully expecting to see the ominous red glow of Madame Scorpion soared out of the corner of my eye with every creak and groan. Uh, but our luck halts, and the only light that enters the room is the blinding white sunshine that pours in once the door at last swings open. 
Nova exits first and I stumble through afterwards, shielding my eyes from the sun, still squinting as I swing the door closed behind us, leaving only a moss-covered slab of metal with no latch or handle. Another minute or two passes before my eyes fully adjust, until now, following Nova's feet as she uh, picks her way. Uh, picks her way through the woods, so I take a moment to finally raise my gaze and give our surroundings a proper look. I don't recognize anything. Must have gotten further than I thought. As if my body is just uh, realizing this too, I stumble and come to a halt. Nova turns around. You okay? I realize that I haven't seen her face this clearly before, thanks to the mask and the dim lighting of the lair. Her eyes are just uh, her eyes are a russet brown, the glints of autumn flickering beneath the surface. Like whiskey and coffee. Yeah, just... Just give me a second. I put my hands on my knees and start to double over, but I feel Nova's hand on my shoulder. I look up, I find her smiling down at me. Not yet, okay? Just a little further. Then you can rest all day. Right. That sounds nice. As I stand up straight, I lean on Nova for support and take a deep breath. Thanks. No problem. Like I said last night, I've got your back if you've got mine. She offers a smile and a playful smack on the shoulder before uh, resuming her hike, and I follow, albeit with more effort. As we walk, I try again to get a better sense of our surroundings. Though nothing is familiar, I can generally tell what direction we're headed based on the sun. So, uh, where are we almost, if you don't mind me asking? The highway is the other way. Uh, notice we still don't know why she invited us in particular since, uh, she got cut off. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the uh, point. She. I won't think to look in this direction. She, yeah, she just in, better hiding She spots. just invited us because she thought, like, after hanging out with us for so uh, for so long, she could kind of tell that it's like he's only in this for the money. So let's you know give him a better chance at life. Hiding spot? Oh man, tell me we're not camping. I mean, we technically had some survival training, but I would always smuggle some energy bars with me, and I'm fresh out right now. As much as I want to see you struggle with a tent, no, it's not a hiding spot for us. Then what? Nova holds a finger up to her lips and smirks. Let me show you. Still smirking, Nova slips into the brush and disappears. Confused but grateful for the respite, I lean against the tree trunk and wait. Silence doesn't last long. <laughs> yeah, work account, right, yeah. Be on your best behavior. In the distance, I hear a low, ominous hiss, the groaning of metal, and a series of quieter clicks and clangs. As that chorus ends, heavy footfalls replace it, stomping through the undergrowth until the shining armored conductor is revealed. You just have to slip into something more comfortable. Think it suits me? So yeah, there's our wheels. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't know where the rebels are hiding, I swear. Oh, right. Hang on, let me switch off the voice modulation. There we go. Is mine really that much freakier than Lord Bedlam's? Just more jarring now that I know what you actually sound like. Though you could probably make a quick buck selling that tech to guys like him if you want to pull a scorpion. I'm good, thanks. But speaking of scorpion... Nova's head swivels back and forth for a moment, scanning the forest. Now that I know who's in there, I can see the similarity in her posture and movements. It's surreal, like deja vu. We're clear for now, but I can't say how long. Time to evac. She extends an armored hand in my direction. All aboard. Are you... Are you going to carry me? Obviously. Fastest way out of here. Well, unless you want me to stuff you in the armor delivery pod, but I can't promise that will be any more comfortable. Don't worry, I won't drop you. <laughs> Trying to grab my butt, huh? <laughs> How do we respond? <laughs> I, I I believe everyone wants to go with B. We do be caked up though. We do be a bit caked up. We're going with the butt, we're going with the butt. Is this just an elaborate excuse to grab my butt? I'm surprised, Nova. I thought a superhero would be above such base temptations. How exactly do you think I'm going to carry you? Like, physically? By the ass. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, just like one cheek in each hand as I hold you over my head or something? I don't think that would work too well while we're flying through the air. Whatever you say, but admit it. You're tempted. 
<laughs> Fuck, that got me, actually. The, I really enjoy the writing in this game. It is actually, like, really well done and funny at times. A breathing mask smacks me in the face, cutting me off before I can blather on any further. Just put on the mask, dork. It'll let us crank up the speed and altitude a little. Fine, fine. I put the mask over my face and secure the strap to the back of my head. When I'm done, Nova once again reaches out her hand. This time I take it. Hang on, don't forget, I've got you. That suit is super macho. Yeah, it's supposed to, like, like, uh, in the first stream, like, we actually fought against, uh, uh, Shining Nova. It's supposed to be, like, a bait and switch. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, Shining Nova was a girl this whole time? Yeah. She did mention she couldn't make him any bigger, yeah. And it also means, you know, even if the crotch on the armor wasn't, you know, armored up, the crotch shot wouldn't have done anything <laughs> as well that we tried to do. Still funny, though. The cold middle embrace is hardly cozy, but it is certainly secure. I think her joints have uh, literally locked me in place. I'm in no danger of falling down, too. Uh, falling down to whatever we're flying over. Yeah, definitely not much of a view either. I guess that's what I uh, what I'd expect from Nova. She's more interested in making sure I'm protected than showing off. It was how she operated during the side gig too, unfazed, efficient, and concerned for the safety of people she barely knew, me included. Uh, women actually still feel crotch shots because it's still very sensitive area, but it is funnier when they're uh, immune completely to it. Exactly. Yes. They aren't completely immune to it, but, you know, it doesn't affect them the same way it affects guys. <laughs> See, how the hell did I end up caught in the orbit of someone like this? I feel like I've crossed some invisible boundary, like I was supposed to live my life in one neat little box and now I've left it. Can't even begin to guess where my destination lies, and not just a physical one uh, that, uh, that I'll end up when, I, uh, when we land. That hasn't been the case for a long time. That is much... Uh, that, as much as the wind racing through my hair and the roar of the thr uh, thrusters, has my heart racing. Issue 7, an apartment on Olympus. 